Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and welcome to episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the other way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for today is, do you think that they've nerfed Blackbeard so much that they should just delete him from the game? So I realize there's been a fair amount of uproar around the upcoming changes to Blackbeard, and I understand that you're probably joking with the suggestion, but one idea that I've heard bounced around lately is what if they completely reworked Blackbeard and gave him a brand new gadget? Clearly, Ubisoft is struggling to balance out this character. We've talked, around, we've talked about this on a lot of previous videos, that if you design a character that blocks headshots, where the entire game revolves around that very mechanic, you're gonna run into problems. Ubisoft is running into problems. It seems like every other update, they're trying to tweak him and balance him so that he isn't just completely busted, but at the same time, trying to make sure that he doesn't just become useless at the same time. And so what if Ubisoft went on in, gave him a brand new gadget, no longer has the shield at the end of his weapon, and while he would still look the same, he would still be called Blackbeard, he's essentially a brand new operator. Now, the problem with the suggestion is, first of all, a lot of people are probably thinking right now, Shut your mouth, Matimio. This is a terrible idea. I love Blackbeard. He's my favorite operator. I actually bought the season pass. I spent money on this game just so I could play as this character. By reworking his gadget entirely, yeah, it might be easier to balance, but that's the character I have fallen in love with. You're essentially removing that, removing him from the game. He might look the same, he might talk the same, but essentially he is a completely different operator. And I completely understand where you're coming from with that argument. Admittedly, Blackbeard really isn't the only one that could probably use a complete rework. Just take a look over at Tachanka. For the longest time, Tachanka has needed an upgrade. It's been years since his last buff. He hasn't gotten any, probably because of this very reason. It would take a lot of time, effort, and resources to be able to develop him to the point where he actually is a competent operator, and because Ubisoft is already developing, you know, new maps, new content in the form of new operators and stuff to that nature, they just probably just simply don't have the time to be able to flush him out. Same could be true for Blackbeard. And so all in all, while personally I'm not completely opposed to the idea because I'm not that attached to Blackbeard, I can fully understand why people would hate this very concept from the very beginning. And so let me know what you guys think of this. Do you think it's a good idea and it's a direction that they could take, especially if they're just going to continue to nerf him, or do you think he should just stay the same? Give me your guys' thoughts down below. The next question comes from Magmalord and it is, I was recently playing Battlefield Hardline on PlayStation 4 and they have motion controls. Since console players for Siege have been wanting to lean from the hip, why not add motion controls? So I'm assuming what you're talking about, because I haven't experienced this myself, is that they would add in a feature where if you tilted your controller to the left and the right, that it would cause your character to lean to the left and the right. This has been something that people have been requesting for a very long time on console. Honestly, I cannot think of a single reason why this shouldn't be implemented. Maybe there are some development issues here and there, I don't know how precise the motion controls is for the PlayStation 4. Like, I'm kind of out of my depth of field here. I'm not the biggest console player, but it's to my understanding that this should be possible. And while I don't think that it should be on by default, I don't think everyone would be on board with that idea, because some people play lounge. They have their controller tilt the entire time while they're laying on their sofa, so they may, they may not want that option on by default, but if you could go into your settings, advanced, select this option, so that you had that kind of capability if you wanted to take your game maybe a little bit to the next level, then I think that should be an option. Admittedly, this is not the first idea I've heard to get console players the ability to lean left and right. While yes, the controller does have less buttons than PC, some people have been really creative on how it would actually be pretty easy to implement this. Ubisoft, for some reason, hasn't gone that extra step, and so maybe they're not even interested. The only thing I can think of for maybe why they wouldn't want to go down this direction is that it would give some players more of an advantage if they go for the advanced options. But honestly, there's other options in this game. Like, even if you go look over on PC, they have advanced deploy for gadgets. Like, as soon as you start to learn that advanced system, it actually gives you an advantage in some small situations. I feel like the same would be true for here. It's not completely foreign to Ubisoft. And so all in all, yep, I agree with you. As long as the technology is there, or if they want to go with a more advanced button layout to allow players that flexibility, 
I don't really see much of a downside. And I know a lot, of, a lot of people have been wanting this kind of option on console. The next question comes from Kyle and it is, do you think that using iron sight should come with a benefit such as lower recoil? Ubisoft did this for Ghost Recon Wildlands and it made for interesting gameplay. How would a mechanic like this work in Siege? This has been something that I've been hoping more games would experiment with because these developers spend a lot of time in creating these iron sights that no one uses. They make them for every single one of these weapons. A lot of them are really unique. They provide a, a slightly different gameplay experience, but because as soon as you unlock any other attachment for that slot, most everyone is going to use that attachment simply because it gives them an advantage. You can see a lot more what's going on in front of you if you're using the Hollow, for example, and that's no exception for Rainbow Six Siege. And so I would love if there was a slight benefit to using that in this game. Now the real question is though, is how do they go about implementing into Rainbow Six Siege so that it works and it's well balanced? One way they could go about it is like what you stated in your question is just simply making it have less recoil if you are using iron sights. Now I know not everyone is going to be on board with that because it's not all that realistic. Why in the world would not having an attachment on top of your weapon have any impact on recoil? And I get that. But at the same time, this is, is, this is a video game. Ubisoft has done a lot of stuff in this game to make balance work, and that could be one way they could go about it. One thing they would have to watch out for, though, is to ensure that certain operators don't become too strong after an adjustment like this. Take a look over at Bandits. His weapon was already amazing simply with iron sights. I know people that don't even use attachments for him because the iron sights are that strong. If all of a sudden he had less recoil now, he might get even better than he already is. People might start to gravitate towards him and he becomes too powerful. I don't necessarily think it'd be game breaking, but it would be one thing they'd have to look out for. All the other classes though, it'd be fantastic. One of the biggest weaknesses of using these is that as soon as the recoil really starts to kick in, the metal bounces in front of your face and you completely lose sight of what you were aiming at. And so if there was a little less recoil, it'd become a bit more manageable. So that would be nice. Another way they could go about it is by allowing players to ADS faster. Some people have told me that that's already the way that it works right now, and so maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about, but that also could allow people to maybe have a more aggressive playstyle. Sure, you can ADS quicker, but the downside is, of course, that you've got a lot of metal in front of you, so that it's going to be harder to take them out. That could be another solution. All in all, though, I think this would be really cool. Like I said, I think a lot of these weapons have really unique sights to them, and it's a shame that no one sees them. And so if they they were able to add in small buffs. I don't think they need to be huge, but small little upgrades for using them. I think that could be a really cool addition into the game as long as they do them properly. The next question comes from Zach and it is, do you think the SMG 12 needs a nerf? So as much as I love playing as Dokubi and Vigil and running around with this thing as essentially a primary weapon because it is that strong, I don't think it's completely unreasonable to make some changes to it to try to put it more in line with, honestly, other primary weapons, but also secondary weapons in this game. This has always kind of been a problem with Rainbow Six Siege for the longest time. You look back at basically every single overpowered weapon over the years, there are some exceptions here and there, but the main theme of them is that they all have a crazy high RPM. The easiest example is Ella. For the first six months, she was probably the best operator ever introduced. Her pick rate was 80% no matter what season it was. She was that good. She was almost always on defense and for good reason. The main one was because of her weapons, high RPM and damage outputs. You of course have the SMG 11, the SMG 12. We have the ones of course for Hibana and Echo. You look at the F2 for Twitch. The theme of every single one of them is that blazing fast RPM. What it comes down to is that by giving these weapons so many rounds to spit down range, that all you need is one to land on their head. The entire game revolves around it. And so even, even if you reduce the damage, which does help, don't get me wrong, this is what happened with Ella. They increased her recoil, they reduced her damage, and I think most people would argue that she's in a much better place right now. Like, that does help, 
But still the problem that you run into, especially at higher tiers, is that everyone is so accurate, all you need to do is spit a bunch of rounds around their head, and eventually you're gonna be able to take them out because of that one-shot headshot mechanic, and that is why the SMG-12 is so strong. And so overall, while I love to play as these operators, this weapon is a lot of fun to use. I also understand that it's pretty ridiculous in its current state, and Ubisoft should probably go on in and make some small adjustments to put it more in line with the other weapons in the game. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's episode of Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Would you like to see a nerf to the SMG-12? Do you not think that's necessary? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until tomorrow guys, have a good one and take it easy.